MATLAB! Salve! This video is the start of a series on plotting in MATLAB. We will go fairly deep, but there are so many more plot types and plot features you can create in MATLAB that it is impossible to discuss all of them. Let's begin with basic 2D plots. First, we'll look at the automatic function plotters, EasyPlot and FPlot. Both of these allow you to pass in a text version of a symbolic equation, and a smooth curve is drawn. The example shown uses fplot, which is more powerful than easyplot. The first input argument is the expression to be plotted. The full equation would read y equals x times cosine of 2x, but we leave out the y equals. The second input argument is the domain of x, across which to plot. 3 times pi is a number a little above 9, so we see that the x-axis goes from 0 to just above 9. These functions have their uses, especially when you want a quick visual of a cleanly defined mathematical function, but more often we will be plotting discrete data points. For that, we need the plot command. Let's start with an example of plot in action. First, we define x, which represents the independent variable x gets created as a vector holding these six values. From x, we then compute y. This is an element-by-element -element computation, so each value in y is computed individually from the corresponding value in x. Now that x and y are defined, we use the function plot to create the figure shown here. Why does the plot have corners? Because we plotted discrete data points. In other words, we plotted ordered pairs. The first ordered pair is 0, 7. We can see that on the left side of the figure. The next ordered pair is 1, 4, and so on. So MATLAB lays out the known ordered pairs on the plot and then simply connects the dots with straight lines. If you need to make a plot then, what do you do? You must start by getting two vectors of the same length. These vectors define the ordered pairs. What if we want a smoother curve? Then we need to get more ordered pairs by increasing the resolution or decreasing the step size in the x vector. On the left, we see the same plot as the previous slide with a step size of 1. On the right, I reduced the step size to 0.5. Notice how this made the curve smoother. However, no matter how much the resolution is increased or how smooth the curve looks, the plot function will still be plotting discreetly. What does a plot without labels mean? There are two answers here. First, it doesn't mean anything to someone reading your work. Second, it means minus points on your assignments. So never forget to label the axes. The way to do that is shown here. For the x label, I only used one input argument, which is the text to be written. It writes correctly, but the label is hard to read. For the Y label, I included the text and also a couple other elements to make it more readable. This backslash BF is a shorthand modifier to make the text boldface. The name value pair of font size and 18 increases the font size to 18. The Y label is noticeably better. Get in the habit of making these sorts of font adjustments. Also, when appropriate, include units in the labels. A title or text written above the plot can be included as well. For that, simply use a function named title following the same pattern shown for X label and Y label. We already saw the use of the shorthand modifier backslash BF to make the text boldface. Unsurprisingly, there are plenty of other modifiers available. Here are some related to text appearance, including italics, superscript, and subscript. On the right are examples of using special characters. Most of the Greek letters are available within labels. To have them display, use a backslash followed by the name of the letter. Notice how the case of the D in delta changes the case of the Greek letter shown. A number of mathematical symbols are also available, such as the approximately equivalent and the less than or equal to signs. To see the full list of options, refer to the official MathWorks documentation. Here we see an example of text modifiers in use. Notice the X label starts with bold font, but then returns to normal font. The Y label is all in italics, 
and it uses the special symbols for pi and for the times operation. Lastly, the 2 in R squared is nicely written as a superscript. We have already seen the use of a name value pair for adjusting the font size. There are dozens of other name value pairs available. An abbreviated list is shown here. Other key ones provide the ability to change the text color, set a border color around the text, adjust the rotation angle of the text, or align the text to the left, center, or right. Here's an example of some name value pairs used to modify the X label. The boldface shortcut still applies. Here, the font size is increased to 18. Here, the font name is changed to Arial. And here, a borderline for the text box is added with a specific color. This color is specified with an RGB triplet. The example shown mixes 100% red, 20% green, and 0% blue. So, it is mostly red with a slight tint of green. This final slide is a reminder of a convention used when talking about a plot in a sentence. The phrase something versus something implies that the first variable mentioned is the dependent variable and should be plotted on the y-axis. The second variable mentioned is the independent variable and should be plotted on the x-axis. In this example, dependent area is a function of independent radius. This convention is usually followed, but not always, so be very particular when you hear something versus something, and use your judgment to identify what is meant. Also, a common mistake I've noticed with my students is to flip the order of the variables when using the plot function in MATLAB. The phrasing goes y versus x, but the syntax goes x comma y.